Hello, everyone. They're flooding in. It's a, a flurry of people jumping in today. <laughs> awesome. I see everyone's on mute so far, but feel free to unmute yourself at the beginning here if you want to chat while we wait for people to join us. Kelly, see you there. Hi, Kelly. Hello, everyone. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Very good. good. Very good. I feel I believe we had over 30 registered, so hopefully everyone can join us or if not, they can watch the recording later. Mm -hmm. Lots to discuss with this topic. Yes. And a lot of fall events coming up. Yeah, my calendar for travel and events is quite full, and I feel like it's that way every autumn, you know? Yes. And gearing up for next year, right, with 2025 planning? <clears throat> yeah, I've actually spent some time already looking at the 2025 calendar. So there's a you, lot going on. Do you have yours published yet? I know you typically publish a calendar. Yeah, some. yeah. The Enterprise Software Podcast Events Calendar has already been updated for the first half of 2025. So awesome. I spent some time on it a couple of weeks ago. There's, people are getting jazzed about events and they want to know ahead of time before they prepare their 2025 budget. Makes sense. Yes. Awesome. Well, it's two minutes after. I'm sure we'll keep having people join us so we can get started just to be mindful of time. Thank you everyone for joining Bob and I today for this discussion. Um, we're excited to be here and to share some tips, some tricks, a little math later on in the session on ROI. Man. And we want to make it fun and interactive. So please feel free to unmute yourself at any time, ask a question or throw one in the chat. We're here to be helpful and to ha make this fun, right? Events are fun. Let's have a dialogue um, versus us just speaking um, to you the whole time. And so I see some of our friends have joined us here today and former colleagues. Hey, guys. Right. Thanks for coming. Um, okay, so we'll get started. We wanted, well, I dug up some old photos. So we could speak to this slide and really just share a little bit about who we are and um, maybe a little bit about our journey together at various events. But Bob and I met back in 2017. So to introduce myself, um, I'm Angie Ryan, and I um, am currently a marketing consultant and I own Ryan Growth Marketing. Um, but in the past, I've worked for various uh, Microsoft Dynamics ISVs and Dynamic Communities and other organizations. Um, and Bob McAdam has joined me today. Bob, do you want to say a little bit about yourself? Yeah, certainly. Thanks for inviting me today, Angie. Um, I'm Bob McAdam. I head up strategic partnerships at Tasklet. This is, um, well, Angie and I, as she said, have worked together not once but twice before. So it's very nice that you invited me to discuss stuff that we've worked on together for a long, long time on this event. Events are, are especially post-coronavirus, are really superb, and uh, they're making a nice comeback. So discuss it, to discuss it today is great. I am uh, the former GPUG general manager. I'm an advisory board member with the Dynamics user group. And uh, yeah, the events calendar is full, and I don't think either one of us would have it any other way. Yes. And this is just a blast from the past here. I put some years, but um, 2019, Bob and I traveled to South Africa together for an event. And in 2017, that awesome. yeah, that was amazing. 2017, we were in Nashville with the now pre Doug president, Molly Fuchel. So had to throw that in there too with Bob's cowboy hat and belt buckle. That's um, right. A, a classic throwback. <laughs> Who knew Molly would ascend to the presidency of Doug? But yes. she has, and she's doing a great job, and and Doug is on a very nice trajectory. So working with you two, always fun, always. And fun. that that's a great segue into um, a couple of maybe we'll call them commercials here for Doug. Right. They've asked um, <laughs> during these meetups that we share a little bit about Doug, especially if this is your first time joining a Doug 
meetup. So we're just going to do a couple slides here and then we'll really get into the event ROI content. So yeah, if you haven't engaged with Dynamics User Group yet, please visit dynamicsusergroup.com. There are 45,000 community members now in our community and adding your name to the list costs you nothing. So the opportunity to learn all things Dynamics, 365, GP, Power Platform, Copilot, you name it, it's being discussed by you and your peers all the time across the world and at in-person events. So please check out the Doug Hub at dynamicsusergroup.com and get involved. It's a great way to grow your network, grow your career, and grow your knowledge. It's really a win-win a, a for everybody. Yes, and this slide dives even deeper. There's a lot on this slide but really yeah. showcasing some of the ways you can get involved if you aren't already. I know many of the folks, the names I see on this um, call today have participated in a lot of these things and the Doug conferences, uh, meetups, et cetera. But um, check it out. We hope you find value in this and join us again at future events. Okay. So periodically we have regional meetups, right? Not just in cities across the US or the world. Um, earlier this year, there was a big one, almost 200 people registered in Columbus, Ohio. That was the last week of uh, August. And then right around that same time, there was quite a crowd in Houston as well. So down here in Tampa, where I am, there's gonna be a Southeast regional meetup and the date's been changed just this week to October 29th. So an opportunity to come to the Sunshine State and spend a day learning about BC, CE, FNO, Power Platform, Copilot, the usual suspects here in the Tampa Bay area. And of course, another one in November in Toronto, Ontario, a great city if you've not been there. So if you're in Ontario or say Western New York and you wanna get into the regional Doug meetups, they're happening all the time and you find meetups, events, et cetera, everything on the slide, dynamicsusergroup.com at that website. So please check it out. There's a lot of information at the Doug homepage. Yes. <clears throat> All right. Who is coming to Chicago next year, May 13th through the 16th, Dynamics Con 2025? I feel like we should do in the chat just because with polling, I honestly have not done it before in a Teams webinar, Bob. <laughs> so That's we're okay. just gonna do it in the chat. So put it in the chat if you're already planning to go, maybe if you're thinking about it, um, we'd love to get some interaction. If you haven't registered yet, we do have a special 50% off promo code for you. So I'll maybe let Bob speak a little bit more about DynamicsCon for those who aren't aware of what it is, um, we might have, I know we had some newcomers that were registered for today's event. I'll pop the code yeah. in the chat. Yeah, so Dynamics Con um, started out as virtual back in 2020 during the pandemic. But since that time, there have been four in-person events, Anaheim, San Antonio, Scottsdale, and this most uh, recent May was in Denver. Next year's will be in Chicago and it's mid-May. So it's um, right in the middle of the month, right in the middle of the spring. And the trajectory for attendance each year has been up, up, up. It's really on a very nice trajectory and it's starting to gain traction. It's a reasonably priced event. A lot of the ISVs like Tasklet will be there. And, and we're looking forward to another big event in Chicago. Uh, again, Molly and Liz have that thing humming and in-person event attendance is really going up. So Dynamics Con every spring is the place you want to be for all things Microsoft Dynamics and other integrated tools. I, we're already making our plans for next year and it's only September. So we are anxious here. Agreed. I dropped it in the chat. I see Jacob message that he's planning on attending. That's awesome. Okay, looking forward to that event. I can, I have a slide at the very end too that has the promo code again, if you miss it. That's a 50% uh, discount too, isn't it? Pretty good deal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Usually you get what, 10, 15% off maybe for Usually events? Usually get 10 or 15. Yep. Mm -hmm. Not half. Yep. All right. 
the moment everyone's been waiting for, let's get into the content for today's session. Enough of the Doug commercial. Um, <laughs> so really <laughs> what we plan today, and I just highlighted here are strategies around pre-show, on-site, post-event, and then how to calculate that event ROI. Those are our four main topics for today's session. So we're looking forward to diving in deeper. Like I said, feel free to chat, ask questions, or just go off of mute too. We'd love a discussion on these topics. All Great. right. Um, so pre-event strategy, planning for success. You know, I think it's a no-brainer, but, you know, people are in a hurry. They might not always have a lot of time to take a step back and set and define some goals and KPIs, but it is so important before you go to an event. And even if you are rushed and you maybe didn't start planning a year in advance, six months in advance, and you only have a few weeks, it's still important to jot down your goals, right? What do you want to get out of the event? You know, I've even had some of my clients say, well, we just want to make sure we get at least the return on what we spent. And we also right. really want to see like a three to four X return. So that's their goal. So if the event is costing them 30 K, for example, they're really looking for, they've got, you know, average deal size of maybe 50 K, like 150 K, like three deals to come in from that show. Just for example, just one type of goal that you can set really around, um, each event, but there's different types of goals. So we wanted to talk about those two with brand awareness, customer engagement, other types of goals besides revenue. Yeah, you're exactly right. It's easy to just drive to the airport, get on the plane. Hey, I'm here. Let's go. Everything's very fluid. You're moving 100 miles an hour every single day, up early, up late, out late, and up next morning and doing it all over again. But you're exactly right, Angie. Taking the time before you get to an event to make a plan, determine what it is you want to do or succeed with, that's important. And if you're a customer or if you're a partner on this call thinking about your customers, you should be encouraging them to make a plan, you know, plan out their agenda, figure out where they're going to be during the day, figure out where they're going to be in the evenings. And of course, if you're a partner, engage your customers while they're at an event so that you can help them plan better, scale their business and be that core component that they're looking for in the relationship. Those things, planning them and then executing them on site are just huge. Yes. And there's all different tools you can use, of course, for goal setting, KPI tracking. You know, you might already have them at your company. So I would suggest using those if you can. If not, throw it in a spreadsheet, right? And detail out what you want from each person that's attending as well. Like having company goals and personal goals is really important. Yeah, and at the moment you say that, we had a chat comment from Emily Toll. Yep. And you might be covering this, but do you have a template for the event goals slash KPIs? So I don't know that we have a template per se. That's not right. to say that I wouldn't approach each event the same way each time and try yeah. and plan accordingly. But I don't know that I would have a template because partners have a different set of goals than customers do. And each customer, each partner has a different varying plan. I don't know that it would necessarily fit into a template, but we do have some math from our, uh, you know, the two of us math majors here at the end, which we can go over briefly at the end for what that's worth. Yes. Yeah. So Emily, great question. Like Bob said, yeah. we don't have like a template per se, but what I would suggest doing is really detailing out first like, what are some of the goals you're thinking about? If you're exhibiting, for example, are you really trying to drive awareness for your brand? Is that one of your goals? Or do you have great brand awareness? Does everyone know who you are? Are you the market leader? And right. you're not so concerned anymore about brand awareness and you really want lead gen or you really want to engage with your customers. Let's say you have the market share and you want to make sure that your customers are appreciated doing something special for them in your booth or doing something in the evenings for them or a breakfast. Um, maybe they get a special piece of swag. Um, there's other ways that you can engage folks based on your goals. So defining what's important to you and your business and then setting some personal ones. Do you want to set up 10 meetings while you're there? Do you want to set attend X number of sessions on a certain topic or learn or get CPE credits. Like there's all different types of 
goals you can set going into the event. Um, do you want to be a speaker next year at the event? What do you need to do to achieve that goal? You maybe want to meet with other speakers this year and learn from them and how they got their sessions um, accepted. So, yeah, there's just so many different ways you can take it um, and goals you can set. Maybe it's social engagement. We haven't talked about that. Is that important to you? You know, making sure you're active on social, you're getting engagement, you're tagging people, you're getting um, responses. So uh, I guess that's our best advice on goal setting, but I love the questions. Keep them coming. Thank you. Yep. I hope you don't mind if it interrupts. So the reason why I asked is we're, I'm with SA Global, if anybody's okay. aware. Um, we're global. And so our CMOs kind of, we're working our process as we go. So something okay. new we just instituted is this slide I just plopped in here. And obviously we're refining it as every event. So I just didn't know if you guys had best practices. You always like just before an event or maybe even this year for 2025 just so you can look back on them also. So I'm, I'll stop derailing your conversation now. <laughs> no, I love it. Thanks no. for jumping in. This is what we wanted, interaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I'm a partner, it. if I'm a partner, I want to make plans around um, getting as many meetings in place as possible, pr presumably with existing customers or prospects. I plan with other ISVs, you know, with ISVs to, to make a plan and see how they fit into my customers' needs. I, and I want to make sure my customers are, are being catered to, right? You've got customers, some of whom may be coming uh, to an event for the first time. And when I was a partner way back when, um, I made it a point to take my customers through the expo hall because it's daunting and it's overwhelming and there are solutions all over the place, some of whom overlap. And you absolutely need to walk your customers through that so they have a comprehensive idea of, of what it is they're getting into. They've got pain points. Your job is to help them solve those pain points. And there are lots of ISVs, whether you've got warehouse pain points or tax pain points or what have you. There are solutions out there that can solve these problems and investments in those ISVs. If the customer gets taken through properly, can really be helpful and help them scale and garner ROI faster than they could ever have imagined. Yep, I hope that's helpful, Emily, for your questions. But thank you. I, I totally get it, like having a template or having something that you use at every event. I will mm -hmm. say um, when I worked more like outside of this channel and in manufacturing, we definitely had um, a rating scale and rating system for each event that we went to and there were four tiers and there was one through four the top one was the number ones and those were the events that we always did we had like the way we rated them was based on the scale of various factors and maybe you do that too to decide which events to go to but those number ones were ones that we just we were always at like if we weren't there people would wonder why we're not there. Um, and then yeah. there was tier two, tier three, and the spend would be higher at tier one and so on. Um, so I guess it, that would be a good way to do it too. Um, we didn't touch on that, but if you have a lot of events, you know, within your space or separate industry events or have to figure out a way, you know, which events are you going to return to in the future? Um, obviously, when we get to the ROI and calculating that, it'll help you decide. But sometimes you have to be there. Um, so maybe your investment looks a little different. Because if you're not there, there's questions. Okay, Bob. We we didn't even touch on the last bullet point with the exclamation point. Um, well, Bob's yeah, favorite. you're He right. coined this phrase in the industry. I think you did. I think you were the first I, one to say that. I, I did. I When I was GPUG general manager, I used to be annoyed by people who would go to sessions all day and then race back to their hotel room at five o'clock when the day was over to catch up on email. I'm like, you know, there's so much going on in the evenings, you know, parties and dinner with your partner and all that sort of thing. You shouldn't be racing back to your hotel to try and pick up your day because you were at an event. The event goes well past 5 p.m. So I would I would get on stage and say, don't tell your boss or your spouse that you'll be out late partying at insert ISV name 
party here, tell them you'll be out late advancing your networking opportunities because that's really where you can meet people, discuss things, grow your network. The day does not end at five o'clock at events like this. It ends when you're at the airport getting ready to fly home. So, And it's sometimes not even then, right? Because everyone yeah. else is in the airport. So <laughs> That's true. That's true. You run into him at the airport and he's to keep on going. So yeah, sleep yeah. on the way home. It's a lot easier. <laughs> yes. All right. Let's transition into um, some on-site event strategies that we have. Um, if you have any more questions, though, on pre-event strategies, definitely reach out to us or pop it in the chat. You know, the only bullet we didn't dive super deep into, I think, on this one, Bob, is more of like that marketing and outreach plan. So I'm going to go back real quick to that. Um, okay. You know, creating a list of who you want to target is really important. Maybe you already have that, um, but if you want to, you know, whether it's in your CRM tool, it's in a spreadsheet, whatever format that takes, but having these key people you want to reach out to before you get there, right? Instead of hoping you're going to run into them. So are there certain current customers? Are there prospective, you know, prospects yeah. you have? Are there existing partners or prospective partners you want to meet up with? Maybe it's... Um, some media folks, you know, that's another one to consider too, going into a show. Wh who are those people? Like in this space, there are MVPs, Microsoft MVPs. Do you have a short list of those folks? Just really detailing out who you want to meet with and then reach out if you have their email address or send them a message on LinkedIn and try to get a meeting booked if you can. If not, maybe invite them to your session if you're speaking or your booth if you're exhibiting. Um, I think that's also key before you go. Back in our Cavallo days, we leveraged Calendly just to set up meetings with people we wanted to talk to, whether they were prospects or existing partners we wanted to expand our reach with. So yeah. that's a great way to plan meetings ahead of time. So when you get there, you're ready to go. And I know we have a couple marketers on this call, but if you're not in marketing, you know, working with your marketing team or whoever is handling that, I'm sure they're creating a plan. But if not, create your own plan too. Like, what do you want to post about? What do you want to be doing around the event? Do you want to post on your socials, you know, the few weeks leading up? Let people know you're going to be there. Like during the show, what are you going to post? Are you going to post some photos of yourself or videos of yourself with others? After the show, what are you going to share out? So think about that, not just social, but email marketing, other types of marketing at the event. Uh, I know we have various different folks on the call here that might not all touch marketing, but you can think about it personally. If, if you're not on the marketing team. Bookings is a good option that is MS-based for Scalably. Thanks, yeah. Emily. Awesome. Okay, now I will actually move on to the next slide. <laughs> On-site event strategies. All right. Well, we think it's very important, obviously, if you are exhibiting, to try to craft a compelling booth experience. This is just a random photo I found online that I thought was really colorful and beautiful. <laughs> um, depending what type of show you're going to or fits. Looks like a great show. It does, it looks really fun. Like if you're going to a smaller show or you have a 10 by 10 booth or it's an industry event, it's, you know, it all ranges right in what we can do and what we have space to do. But think about it ahead of time, make a plan of how are you going to engage people both visually, your messaging, are you going to do giveaways? What is that going to look like? What is that experience for someone walking by in the hallway or coming up to your booth? Are you going to have a game? Um, there's things that you can do to draw people in to your booth experience for sure. My friend uh, Todd McDaniel at G Pug Summit 2013 in Tampa um, hired a, a cigar roller to be in his booth because mm -hmm. Tampa's a cigar city and quite a few people stopped by to pick up a cigar with his company logo on the ring. It was pretty slick. That's pretty nice. And you remember the year. I love that. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do. Good I memory. remember them all, quite frankly. Eleven, yeah. 11 years ago. I know. Yeah, yeah, drop it in the chat, you guys. I'd love to hear like some things that you remember from events. Maybe you did it or you hosted it in your booth. But what are some things that were memorable, like experiences that you had at different shows? I remember once it was a summit probably in 20, I don't know what year it would have been. Um, 
maybe 2014, Bob, or somewhere around there, um, there was a contortionist at one of the booths. And I'll never forget that. Like, everyone was stopping to watch her, and she was, like, I think it's called a contortionist. I think what it is, is it too, called when right. you can, like, basically bend your body all different right. ways? Right? Yeah. It's crazy, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Expresso machines, massages, headshots. Yeah, puppies. Puppies are always a hit. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Getting some chats. Okay, we'll keep going as people drop some ideas in the chat. I just love hearing what everyone has remembered. You know, maybe it's 10 years later, like Bob's example. Um, but that's what you want to strive for, right? Like some of it is what you give away. Like I think back to some of the shows I went to and everyone wanted a certain stuffed animal, but there was a limited quantity. And you think about it like in real life, would you really care about this stuffed animal? Probably not if you're out and about, but if you're at a show and it's like the hot topic and everyone's walking around with them and you want one for home or your kiddo or whatever, um, it's kind of fun to think about that, right? Like what what is that one thing that people give away? Creating demand, right? Just like that. Totally, totally. Okay, so how can you engage attendees outside of your booth? Like if, if you're exhibiting, right? Not everyone's going to be exhibiting, and we're trying to cover various topics today. Um, but there are so many ways you can do that as well. We talked a little bit already about social media. Um, but, you know, there's event sponsorships. I know, Bob, we've done those in the past. You and I mm -hmm. have um, right. both been bo on both sides of those sponsorships, guerrilla marketing strategies. I just put some examples on here too, but there's so many ways you can get people engaged outside of booth. So don't just focus on the booth alone. That's for sure. Yeah. Speaking sessions to me is key, especially if you're a partner or ISV, you want to be labeled as a subject matter expert practically instantly. You give an educational session without selling your company's wares you're an expert on inventory, you're an expert on receivables, you're an expert on manufacturing, you give a session and people say, gee, this person knows what they're talking about. I'll bet they work with others at the company they're employed at who also are knowledgeable in these areas. And boom, you start obtaining a following and it's, it's almost like free marketing. You're providing a service, you're providing good education and, and you can build a brand around those speaking sessions. It's really, it's really, I've seen it done many, many times. Yep. And when I think about some of the folks in this space, in the Doug community that go to Dynamics Con and other events within this space, you know, some of the regional meetups, you right. know, there's some of them that have very small businesses. Like I'm thinking of a couple of folks that I know you're friends with, Bob, and they do such a great job promoting themselves and promoting their business that you would never know they only have one or two employees or just <laughs> you're themselves. Exactly right. They're just right. Um, yeah, sole proprietor. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if you if you don't have a huge marketing team. Like you can be scrappy and be creative and think of ways to stand out. Um, and it's, it's fun to do, right? You know, especially if you liked being creative. Um, so not everybody wants to be on social or share selfies or videos. Uh, so there's other ways to do it too. But but yeah, just it doesn't always have to be a big spend to stand out. Yeah. We mentioned the Expo Hall walkthrough. I always thought that was important to take my customers when I was a reseller through the Expo to help them find solutions that I thought would fill gaps. And then lead collection and qualification. Are those lead generation and lead qualification collection devices worth the cost, Angie? Well, it depends who you ask. I would say typically they are worth the cost. They are very expensive, but sometimes you can share, right? Yep. Like you don't have to get or pay for everyone to have it if you don't have a large budget. If you do have a large budget, it's convenient if everyone has access. Um, in the olden days, you'd actually have an actual device they'd drop off at your booth and you would scan. Right. And I think some of the shows still do, but a lot mm -hmm. of them now, you just download an app on your phone and you scan with your cell phone. Make sure <laughs> you bring easier. extra charging cords for your cell phones if you're using them all day at the booth. Um, but yeah, a lot easier. I think it's helpful because how else are you going to capture them if you are exhibiting? Um, not a lot of people carry business cards anymore. Some people have the electronic 
business cards. I don't know the cool term for that, but there's a way you can scan from your phone or from other devices and you can scan QR codes um, instead of business cards. But I think it's key because you need to collect them somehow and no one wants to stand in a booth and fill out a sheet of paper anymore. That also was like an very popular, right? Like that's how everybody mm -hmm. did it. And you had someone type them up um, after the show. I'll never forget one of the shows I went to. I won't name the partner I worked at at the time, but they, the gentleman that was in charge of those paper leads put the leads in with the booth and the booth was getting shipped back like with ground shipping <clears throat> and it was going to okay. take a long time. So we all flew back from the show. We get back to the office. We're looking for the leads. We need the spreadsheet. We need someone to type them up. And he admits that he, packed it with the booth <laughs> so huge delay <laughs> waiting Brutal. for that to get back and like slow follow-up yeah it was tough <laughs> that doesn't happen Gee. anymore with electronics no. yeah thank god yeah <laughs> yeah what's next here we did have a comment about yeah purchasing lead scanning devices so your team doesn't have to use phones all day do one device per two people. Yeah, that's smart too, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, next is post event. We're talking post event strategies. Not you just mean we have to keep working after we get home? Yeah, don't forget about this part, right? This is key. This is arguably one of the most important parts of the event um, is the post show. And not just follow up. The title says follow up, but I added a couple things here at the last two bullets too that we can touch on um, outside of just following up with the the connections you've made. So really, yeah, one, oh, go ahead, Bob. That one at the bottom, knowledge sharing. If, you, if you're a customer, you know, a lot of customers, if you're a customer, you gotta, you're probably a special group that gets to go to an event and you're expected to come home and uh, train your colleagues on everything that you learned and you attended sessions for two or three consecutive days and your brain is mush and your notebook is worn out. Um, so it, it's, it's a, good time to a good plan to come home and, and try and organize those things so you can be an effective trainer and if you're an effective trainer as a customer the likelihood that you go back to events in the future because your post-event follow-up is so good is pretty high you know for sure yeah so as far as like following up with not just leads, right? If you didn't exhibit, but you went to a show because not everyone exhibits or not everyone has a budget to exhibit, but maybe you're checking out a show and you're seeing if, you know, you want to do that show next year. Maybe you are considering exhibiting next year. Um, whatever the case may be, making sure to take any and all of those contacts that you've captured and making a plan, right? Segmenting those folks, separate them, of course, sort out if they are leads, like which ones are hot, which ones maybe aren't as hot. If you want to do cold ones, you want to definitely follow up with your hot ones first, but group them and then tailor your follow up messages. I think this is where a lot of companies maybe fall short is just sending one message to all like one size fits all. And this takes more time, but it's worth it in the long run if you tailor your follow up messages. And a good tip is to write as much of that message as you can prior to the show even starting. So it's less of a lift when you get home. You obviously right. want to add in any conversations you had or make sure you tailor it specifically if you can to that person or that company, that organization. Um, but having the bulk of the message created for your team members is also helpful. And maybe your marketing team already does that for you. And then you can tailor those messages too. And just, you know, there is a rule of thumb to follow up right away. Obviously, some companies wait because they know everyone's getting bombarded when they get home. So that's up to you. I just put it on here, um, you know, timely outreach, especially for your hot um, leads or contacts or connections. Maybe it's not leads, right? It's just other connections you made. Try to follow up within a couple of business days. That way it's not a week or two later and they have since moved on from all things show related and don't remember your conversation. Yeah. The first day back is always the worst one. <laughs> totally. Um, and then just, you know, provide valuable content if you can. You know, it's nice to include things if you can include them. If you have access to 
product demos or other things um, that relate to the conversations you had. Maybe it's a link to a YouTube video or just trying to personalize it as much as you can. These are just some ideas that you could share um, with the folks you meet with. And track it. Use whatever CRM tool you use. This is obviously a Doug meetup. So most of the folks on the call are going to have a Dynamics product, but not all, right? Some will have, right. you know, other CRMs, but make sure you're monitoring, engaging, and nurturing those. Don't just do one and done because that person's got a full inbox. As you know, they've got everything to catch up on from when they were gone at the show, plus all the people now bombarding their inbox. Um, it takes more than seven touches now. I don't know what the new stat is, if it's like 10 to 14, um, but try to touch them in different ways, phone calls, um, LinkedIn messages. There's other ways versus just emailing. Anything to add, Bob? Nothing really. I think you covered this slide pretty well. So, yeah, I think the only but, bullet we didn't talk about would be that attendee debrief, the postmortem. Right. We talked about knowledge sharing the sessions, but having all the people who attended come together, whether yeah. it's a virtual meeting or some people I know do this the last day of the event. I don't know how realistic that is for some companies, but I, I don't either. Heard of yeah. Some partners that do that. Mm -hmm. um, kudos to them. But they plan a time where everyone gets together and debriefs. Um, they're, you know, called a postmortem, a retrospective. There's a bunch of names for this type of meeting, but just see their action review. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Um, successes, right? Opportunities, things you could change, especially if you're going to come back in a future year. Yep. Okay. On to math. Who's ready for a little bit? We're going to do some math today. Gee, nobody told me that. <laughs> We are. Were you an accounting major, Bob? I was, yeah. Quite a couple, couple three years ago, yeah. You should have designed this slide then. <laughs> you did a great job, Angie. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, so this is, you know, really the last piece that we want to share with everyone today. But um, how do you calculate the ROI for an event? There's a lot of different ways. This is just one way that we wanted to share with you. So determine your costs if you had a booth or not, right? The travel, sponsorships, marketing, you name it. Everything that went into you going to a certain show. Then all those late night cocktail parties and all that stuff, it has to be added in there too? Yeah, unfortunately. Gee, Unless you have a, some separate budget, you can sneak that one in, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah for team building or I don't know where right. you want to put that. <laughs> um, and then track that revenue generated. And here's the thing. If you don't know yet because you got a certain number of opportunities, assign a value to those opportunities of an average deal size, for example, right? Like if it's 30K, you could assign that if that's what your average deal size is and you have three opportunities from the show you're projecting, you know, 90,000 there. So things like that you can do early on if you have a long sales cycle and you don't, and you want to calculate an ROI versus waiting maybe three, six, nine months um, after the show. And then here's the formula that you can apply. So I kind of listed it out on the bullet on the left and then also on the right with some examples just to showcase how you take the revenue, total revenue, Subtract out your costs, all your event costs, then divide by that event cost total, and then multiply by 100. There you go. And, you know, let's say, let, let's, let's be specific here about revenue. Revenue generation when it comes to events doesn't just happen, you know, in a, in a vacuum. It, it takes time. You go to events on a regular basis. You show yourself off as a subject matter expert or a regular attendee who's, you know, going to be hitting events on a regular basis. But you want to make sure that that revenue is is generated over time. And I, I remember in, early on in my event experience, um, sales leaders were always looking for tiebacks. You know, you went to this event, we spent this much money. What are the, the what's the revenue tracking for this event? And in a lot of cases, these things don't percolate uh, on, as one-offs. It takes a couple, three events to kind of get your branding out there, make your case as a subject matter expert, et cetera. It doesn't just happen overnight. It has to be, you know, percolated over time. It really is not something that just comes around the bend the, mo the moment you complete a, a, 
a, a, an educational session or tear your booth down. There's it, it's a regular event in my in my viewpoint, and garnering revenue does take time. But once you garner that momentum, um, it, it it just makes it easier. It, there is an investment on the front end, in other words. Yeah. And I listed here as the be the fourth bullet. You know, you can also assign some value to those non financial metrics too, because right. I know I saw like in that slide that was shared earlier um, from Emily. I think it was one of the goals they had. I think on there was awareness, right? So assign some value to that. What is that worth um, for your business? Because I think that's important. And then thought leadership too, right? If especially if you spoke at the event or you yep. had articles or other things that were shared at the event, you had media. Um, there's so many other things in addition to leads and opportunities and sales closed um, that are important around events. And sometimes people forget about that or you know, you get a, a CEO or a CFO that's just looking at the numbers and says, we're not going back to this event next year because right. yeah. we didn't get enough sales from it. And you say, but what about all the other things that we got from the event? So trying to figure out a way to assign some um, value to those, it might not be a dollar amount, right? Yeah, early on yeah. in my GPUG days, I did a lot of thought leadership because GPUG was brand new and we didn't. We had to get the message out that you could come to an event and learn about Dynamics GP and other things but it takes time to build up that traction so people get the word and show up at your events. We had 109 people at the first GPUG Summit in September of 2007, and 10 years later, we had 2,000, and that was just attending the GP portion. That didn't include AXCE, NAV, et cetera. You know, we had a big event when you and I were working at DCI, and, and it just takes time to build that up. Thought leadership is, is hard to measure one event at a time it really is yeah yeah for sure um and then you know obviously compare it to those pre-event goals and those kpis you sent that's you set excuse me that's really important you know what were some of the metrics you wanted to track is it social engagement you know in addition to all these other things that were mentioned tracking them how did you do how did you perform based on what your goals were um just as one example for sure yeah Yeah, Jacob just mentioned as a Gen Z employee in the early stages of my career, it's nice to be at events to build my network in the industry. That's a great point, Jacob. Thank you for sharing that for sure. And that's, yeah. you know, valuable. Um, you know, what is the value that you can assign to that? You don't know, but it pays off dividends in the future if you build that network up for sure. Thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let, drop anything else you guys have in the chat for sure, but we're going to move on. And I think you guys have been doing great on um, adding in some comments. We really appreciate it. But we want to open it up for questions. And I thought I'd pop in a couple of fun photos here. The top one is this would be 2023 Dynamics Con. Scottsdale, the, right? Scottsdale, Arizona, where they had the donkeys at one of the events, evening events. And that uh, is Bob Barash there. He uh, does sales for Doug. Um, and then the bottom picture is you, Bob, in the background here. You want to speak? With to my Tasklet colleagues, some of whom came over from Denmark for Dynamics Con in Denver, participating in the advanced networking opportunity that evening that involved Casino Night. It was lots that of was fun. This year, right? 2024? That was this past May, yeah. In they all Denver. had a good time. Yeah. yeah, we had four or five people come over from Denmark to attend Dynamics Con because it's grown so quickly. That's awesome. So what questions do you guys have for us today? Did we answer them all? Do you have burning questions? Like drop them in the chat, just go off mute. Feel free to just chime in. We wanna make it interactive for sure. Perhaps we covered every aspect of events, Maybe. all the planning, all the on-site execution, <laughs> all the advanced networking opportunities, all the post follow up so that you know you've got all your bases covered and your time and investment was well spent. This was a great presentation, guys. Thank you. I will add one piece of advice for planning before you head to an event. My team yeah. usually comes up with a hit list. Um, 
So for us, like we get most of our leads from Microsoft sellers and from partners. So, you know, I'm preparing now for my team going to summit. So we've got a list of all the partners and Microsoft employees that we already know we're going to be there from our regular cadence calls or from LinkedIn Mm -hmm. or based on who has a booth. So every employee has a list of who they need to make those like face to face connections with. And it could be people we have weekly calls with virtually, but they've never met in person. And we want to make sure that they get that FaceTime in. And then we also ask our customers if they're going to be there as well and plan. If, if we have a customer at an event, we're definitely planning to take them out for dinner at some point. Heck yeah, that's very important. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Thanks, Kelly. All right. Well, if there's no questions, um, we'll move on. This slide really just has our contact information. If you want to reach out to us, our email addresses are here um, or look us up on LinkedIn. Um, You can Mm -hmm. find us there as well. I didn't link that here because sometimes it might be a little bit longer of a URL. But thank you everyone for attending today's session. We are happy to have you and we love the interaction we had. This is just a reminder too on that promo code if you would like to register for DynamicsCon 2025. We hope to see you there. There will be a marketing pre-conference day. So if you are a marketer, look forward to hearing more about that. I know Kelly and I have been asked to help out with that planning um, with the session content for that day. So excited to be involved. this 50... This 50% discount code is only good through the end of this month. So if you want to knock the price down 50%, you've got about a week and a half left. So plan on being at DynamicsCon in Chicago. With the attendance should be pushing 3,000 people, which will be double what it was in Denver only a few months ago. And it is worth <clears throat> your time and effort for learning and networking and, and meeting the great people in this space, like my co-host today who make this this place wonderful to work in. This is a great industry and it's only getting bigger and better. Yes. And I just dropped in our LinkedIn URLs oh, here into the chat. So feel free to connect with us if you want or you think of other questions after this event wraps up. But thank you again, everyone for attending. We hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bob and Angie.